Hello and welcome to a new video about control engineering and standard elements. Today we are discussing the last standard element, finally the last standard element in our list of standard elements. Today we are discussing about a delay system second order or a PT2 element. It's very common um, and you know it's related to the PT1 element. Remember the PT1 element. This was some, some element which has one energy storage inside. And the PT2 element is some element which has two energy storages inside, two significant ones. Yeah? If one is very tiny and one is quite big, it looks like a PT1 element. If, one, if both energy storages are of equal size, it's a PT2 element. Yeah? So, I hope you remember where we came from, this differential equation. Yeah? And we calculated a little bit around and this here was the PT1 element. It turned out to be the PT1 element. Yeah? And now we only take those parts which are there for a PT2 element. Yeah? So, let's have a look how the transfer equation of a PT2 element looks like. It's just right now PT2 element. Well, the differential equation of a PT2 element, there is not one time constant, there are now two time constants. So there's a T2 squared and plus T1 plus 6O equals, and then we have some K multiplied by Xi from T. Yeah. This was the PT1 element. Back. Now we have a PT2 element. Okay. So this is simply one time constant, one delay constant, one storage, energy storage more. And now, if we do the Laplace transformation, like we used to, uh, if we do the Laplace transformation, so this T2 squared will stay there. Here we have second derivation, so this will be S squared and XO from S. Uh, and here we have T1 S, XO from S, yeah, plus XO from S, yeah, equals K multiplied XI from S. Now we did the transfer. Laplace transformation. Okay. Here we can factor out XO. Yeah? So we end up at XO from S e multiplied by, yeah? and now I will simply turn it around because I like it more, 1 here plus T1S plus T2 squared S squared equals K multiplied by XI from S. Okay. And then we now bring it to the other side. So we have written XO from S equals XI from S multiplied by K divided by 1 plus T1S plus T2 squared S squared. Okay. And already we have the form XO is XI multiplied by something. So this something needs to be our transfer function GS. Yeah? So we're still talking about transfer elements, right? So we're still talking about a thing like this. Yeah? There is the PT2 element. And we still have an input and an output. This is I mean, I just mentioned the obvious, hopefully. Yeah. However, this is the transfer function. However, usually we're substituting this. Uh, there's a reason for this. I will explain 
I will explain. Usually we do not write T1 and T2. Uh, usually we say we say there is an omega n, yeah, a natural a natural frequency, yeah, and this T2 equals 1 divided by omega n. This is the so-called natural frequency. Okay? And instead of T1, T1, I'm using usually the form which looks like this, 2d divided by omega n. Yeah? This looks now much more complicated, right? This d here is called damping factor. Yeah? So this is the natural frequency. And this d here, this is the damping factor. We will see what, why we do this. Yeah. So actually, the transfer function of a PT2 element, uh, g from s, is written as k divided by 1 plus, and now t1, this is 2d divided by omega n, be omega, yeah, s plus and now t2 squared, 1 divided divided by omega n squared s squared. Yeah. This is the transfer function, yeah, how it is usually written. I said I'm going to explain why. Yeah. Well, this this PT2 element, this is not that easy to explain. Uh, to, to think about the step responses and so on. This is why we had a look, we will have a look at the computer. Okay? So we will have a look at the computer and see how things are changing. Uh, if we change d or omega n and, and so on. Uh. We'll show you at the computer. So let's start talking about the step response. Okay, so step response is our first task. Uh, here, this is the step response of a PT2 element. Uh, you say, you see, I've chosen k as one, omega n as one, and d as one. So I set everything one, and this is how it looks like. Uh, so the input, the green line and the output, the blue line. It pretty much looks like a PT1 element. Yeah? However, the big difference is that the PT1 element is starting here with a sharp band, yeah? and the PT2 element is starting gentle, so the steepness will rise, 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 rise. At a certain point in time, the steepness will start to drop again. Yeah? So there is an inflection point. This inflection point is typical for PT2 element. Yeah? PT1 element, there is no inflection point, just start and then the, the gain will be lower, 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 lower. And here we will accelerate and then break down again. Yeah? So there is an inflection point, Wendepunkt. Uh, well, let's see what is happening if I change something here. Let's first deal with the K. Uh, K is now 1, let's switch K to 2. Ah. Okay, so the stationary end value is now 2. I mean, this should, after all those videos, this should not be that much of a surprise, right? So if I make here 5, then it's 5, raising to 5. If I make here 1.5, then it's only raising to 1.5. Yeah? So this is, yeah, should not, should not be that of a surprise. Yeah? D. Currently D is 1, damping factor 1, and now we'll go simply damping factor 0. Book. Mm -hmm. This is now a swinging. Huh? We are swinging. Okay? And the swinging is not even damped. So the, the term 
damping factor, this is really a good term. Okay? And we also see we are swinging with the natural frequency, at least. I'm not sure if you see, but I tell you. Here we're starting at zero and at 2 pi, value of 2 pi, yeah, because omega n is 1, yeah, at the value of 2 pi we will reach a full extent again. Yeah. If I enter here 2, natural frequency 2, we will make two swinging in a, in a period of 2 pi. Natural frequency, I don't know, 8. Yeah. Woo, now you see, it's a good name for the natural frequency, right? So the natural frequency is the frequency of the undamped swinging of the BT2 element. Blah, 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 two, of course. Huh? Undamped swinging. So if I select here uh, pi as value, uh, then you see we reach exactly at 2, we reach, because 2 pi would then be, uh, would then be, so after 2 seconds we have a full, full swing, uh, undamped swing. Let's see if I change this to 0 0.5, let's say. Aha! Uh -huh. Looks different, right? So, we have some swinging, but this is damped. And, okay, but the, here we are at 2, we are not already finished, we are later finished. Yeah? So, let's see what is at 0 0.1. Aha! Uh -huh. 0 0.1, we reach, the swinging will not will not be undamped, but little damped, yeah? 0 0.1, yeah? and yeah, you, you see, also here, we the frequency of this swing is lower, yeah? so it seems like the natural frequency, which I reach at 2, is the highest available frequency, and whenever we damp it down, yeah, the frequency will change. Okay, will be a little bit lower, yeah? so the swinging will be not that fast. Zero dot one, yeah? zero wrong, zero dot two. Yeah? Uh -huh, you see, zero dot three. Okay. So it, the damping factor is just adding additional damping. Okay. So 0 0.7, how is looking there? Aha. Uh -huh. Now it really does not seem that we swing anymore. Yeah, well we have still an overshoot. Yeah? Let's see 0 0.9. Uh, this is hard to tell. Yeah? 0 0.8. Uh, this is for sure an overshoot. Yeah, I can tell you. Until the damping factor of below one, until we are below one, we have a slight overshoot. Uh, we will be above above the one value. Okay. So starting at one, zero dot one. Yeah, it will look like that. Yeah. This is the first aperiodic case, yeah? so we will not overshoot. Okay? This starts with damping 1. And let's see what is happening if we further increase the damping 1.5. Uh -huh. It's just getting s slower. C2, slower. Uh, 5, still slower. 10, almost doing nothing anymore. Uh. So it seems like this damping is, if we are below one, huh, then we do have our swing. Huh? We do have also periodics. Huh? If we are at zero dot, below 0 0.7, we will see exactly those periodics. Huh? To remember, look at 0 0.2, huh? damped swinging with a certain frequency, which is lower than the natural frequency. How we calculate this? Huh? Which frequencies are there? I will just show you also at the at the table once again. Okay. 
how those values are calculated. So we said at damping factor levels or values below one, we will have some overshoot with swinging. Yeah? So if D is smaller than one, we have an overshoot and swinging. And this is certainly damped. Yeah? So this is the damping factor and the real damping, this is sigma, is the damping factor multiplied by the natural frequency. Yeah? This is the real damping. And if I want to know how fast this will disappear, yeah, there's also the damping time constant tau, yeah, which is actually 1 divided by sigma. Yeah. So this is this tau, this is like a PT1 element. After one tau, we only have 37% of swinging left. Yeah. Time constant. Yeah. This is how fast this this swing will disappear okay over time this time constant of disappearing yeah? this damping time constant okay and we said the swinging frequency yeah? this will be lower yeah? So the actual free, swing frequency, omega zero, yeah? this is the natural frequency, which is an undamped case, multiplied by the square root of 1 minus d damping factor squared. Yeah? So if we enter here zero, the, the frequency, or the, 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 the thing will swing with omega n. If we enter here one, this will not swing anymore because then we are at zero. Okay, one multiplied by zero, uh, something multiplied by zero is zero, something multiplied by one is one. So this omega zero is something between the natural frequency, which is the fastest frequency available in this system, and the and the, the and zero. Right? Of course, right? of course, this is in rad per second. Right? If I want to have the real frequency in per second, swingings per second, I have to divide this by 2 pi. Yeah? So F0 is omega 0 divided by 2 pi. Yeah? And if I want to calculate how long one swing is taking, it's just the period of this F0, so this T0 yeah? equals 1 divided by F0. Yeah? So this is 2 pi divided by omega zero, actually. Yeah? And if you remember yeah, how those swinging looked like, yeah? draw it here once again for you. Yeah? So here was the step response. Yeah? And then we started here going up and then we damped a little bit. Yeah? And here, this time to the first overshoot, yeah? this is actually, I mean, this is the full period, yeah? and this is T0 half. Yeah? So we can calculate how long it takes to the first massive overshoot. Yeah? This is good. Yeah? And here this overshoot, yeah? I will call it U for Überschießen, German. Yeah? There's a factor in percent. Yeah? So this overshoot factor yeah, equals E raised by the power, and now it's getting complex, yeah? by multiplied by D divided by 1 plus D squared. Yeah? You can type in different things, yeah? and then you realize at D zero, yeah, this overshoot is 1. Yeah, this means it will double the value. 100% yeah? overshoot. So this, this is something between 0 and 1. Yeah? 1 is maximum overshoot yeah? if damping is 0. If damping 
is one then yeah, we will have no overshoot at all left okay in percent yeah? zero means zero no overshoot one means 100% overshoot so at twice the value yeah this is this is in time area yeah? this are the, the values of the pt2 element in time area Let's have a look at different different PT2 elements in time area. Yeah? We'll show you the computer with different dampings and so on that we can compare a little. Yeah? No, not only draw one line. So let's simply compare different damping values. Yeah? K we understand, omega n we understand. Let's compare different damping values uh, simply. Here I've drawn several PT2 elements always the same K, always the same omega N, with different damping values. Let's see, let's start with 0 0.1. Yeah? Let's start with 0, why not? Yeah? Then we're using 0 0.1, then we're using 0 0.2, Ooh, again 0, this is 0 0.2, then maybe 0 0.5, and maybe 0 0.7. Yeah? Here you see the blue line damping zero, no damping at all. The uh, gray line, this is damping zero dot one, and you see we are a little bit later always. Yeah? Like I said, the frequency will get lower. Yeah? And here PT two, the, the the yellow line, still a little bit later. Yeah, and so on. Yeah? You see the frequency is is dropping. Yeah? and the overshoot will be get less. Let's also watch the other way around. Yeah? So let's start at 0 0.7. Let's then stay at 1, yeah? how this looks like, and then at 2, and maybe at 4, yeah? and maybe at 10. 20 is a little bit too extreme. Yeah? And you see what is happening here. In this case, 0 0.2. 0 0.7 still overshoot, 1 is a periodic corner case, yeah, limit case, so we will run in into, yeah, and the other things, well, always getting slower and slower and slower and that's it. Yeah. The more damping, the slower we get. Yeah. In the end we're just crawling, no longer react, just crawl. So this is actually how the PT1 element looks in time. Yeah? Now let's switch to the P PT2, of course. How a PT2 element may look in time, yeah? time area. Now let's switch to, to uh, the frequency area. So this is a PT2 element in frequency area. Yeah? You see, everything is one, K is one, natural frequency is one, damping factor is one, and so on. Let's analyze where the difference is to a PT1 element. Yeah? Because actually it looks like a PT1 element, right? However, take a look at this. Here, at the frequency where we have this band, yeah? we are not at minus 45, we are at minus 90 already. And of course, we're not ending up at minus 90, we're ending up at minus 180. So my phase will be much more later. Huh? We will simply be much later than before. And also here, at PT1 elements, we had factor 10, and the output dropped by factor 10. Huh? So we would end up here. Factor 100, output would drop to factor 100, we would be here. Yeah? And here we are twice as steep as before. Factor 10 dropped by factor 10 multiplied by 10, 100. Okay? So here we are at factor 100 down. And here 100 multiplied by 100 is 10,000. So we are at factor 10,000 down. So it will simply, simply go down much, 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 much more. Okay. Let's change K. Should be not a big surprise. You see, it's two 
3, 10. It's just shifting 14, 10 as it. It's just shifting up and down. In the frequency, there's nothing changing, changing in the phase diagram. Uh, an amplitude diagram, it's, it's changing a lot. Uh, it's changing a lot. So let's keep this at one and take a look at the damping. Yeah? So this is damping one. Ah, looks like a PT1 element. Let's, let's change to zero. That's woo. There, something has changed. Look at that now. This change between zero and 180 degree is going chuck, yeah, fast. Yeah, so we will be at zero and then suddenly at minus 180. And also here we have a thing called resonance. Okay, so the resonance, this is yeah? so the output can be higher than the input. This is what resonance means. Yeah? Let's see. Let's type in a lower, aha, at lower dampings, at low dampings, but not zero, then this transition from zero to 180 degree, this is smoother again, not that steep, but compared to one, really steep. Look at this. This was one, yeah? this is zero dot one. Yeah? So we are steeper. And also here, the resonance frequency, yeah? it's not that high anymore. But we are here still ending up at, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five. Five times more output than input huh? at this frequency. 0 to 2. Huh? This will get more gentle and the, 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 the resonance frequency will be not that poof anymore. Okay? This is what is happening actually. 0 to 3. Yeah. And I will show you afterwards also this resonance frequency. If we took it, if we look at 0 0.1, it's here at the line or maybe a little bit above the line. Yeah. And if we had 0 0.4, let's say, we are with the resonance frequency already significantly left of the line. So the resonance frequency is also not constant. It will change depending on the damping factor. The resonance frequency and the natural frequency or the, the swinging frequency, they are different. Okay? It's not the same value. I will tell you afterwards how you to calculate this. Yeah? And also how much resonance we will see. Yeah? Resonance yeah? can also be calculated. So at 0.7, yeah, what is there? Aha, uh -huh. no resonance anymore. Okay, there is no resonance anymore at 0 0.7, around 0 0.7. Yeah, let's see what is 1. Yeah. This we have already seen. Let's see if we change the damping factor into the other area, side area. 2, hmm, well, not much of a surprise. However, we see already something which will be clearer and clearer the more the damping factor raises. Yeah? Here, this one band is now subdivided into two bands. Here is one and here is one. Yeah? And also this change from 0 to minus 180 is now done in two steps. You see, there's first step and then there's second step. If we put the damping higher and higher, yeah, this will be more and more significant. Yeah? So that is one band and another band, and in between we have even a straight here, and also here we are changing in two steps. What does it mean? Well, actually, if we have dampings above one, then it looks a little bit like two PT1s element in a row. Yeah? So there's one PT1 element with one characteristic frequency and there's another PT1 element with another characteristic frequency and one second PT2 element adding each the phase also to each other so yeah PT2 element consists of two PT1 element yeah, with high dampings looks like 20 yeah. see 
It's getting more and more obvious. 100. Ooh. This is actually show how much those two frequencies of, uh, are spread from each other. And this here, the natural frequency, we can see somewhere here, yeah, in the middle of those frequencies. Yeah. If this is, for instance, 2, yeah, then we are at 0 0.5. Yeah. 1 divided by, again. Yeah. So we are symmetrical to 0 0.5. If this is, for instance, 10, yeah, then we are here. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this is uh, how the frequency is looking like. Huh? I will tell you the the values or the the formulas for calculating this resonance frequency. Yeah, remember this one where the resonance frequency is and where the maximum value of the resonance is yeah? resonance overshoot. Yeah? I will show you the sheet again. So in frequency area we do have resonance. Yeah? And well there's a resonance frequency, the resonance frequency resonance yeah? is depending on the natural frequency of course. And it's calculated by 1 minus 2t squared. That's the location of the resonance frequency. Yeah? And if we're talking about the overshoot of the resonance, yeah? so the overshoot, U, R, Z, yeah? our resonance, resonance overshoot, yeah? it's looking not that complicated like here. It's looking much easier. looking like this. Okay? And if we now put in there yeah, 1 divided by the square root of 2, yeah, then we end up 1 half, this is then 1 divided by the square root of 2, this would be then 1 half, 1 minus 1 half is 1 half, square root of 1 half, yeah? so this is 1 divided by square root of 2, 2, 2, 2, yeah? there is no resonance anymore. Okay. This is why we end up at, uh, at a damping factor of 1 divided by the square root of 2, no resonance. And this is around 0 0.7. This is 0, 0 0.70 something. Yeah? This is why we have used here over 0 0.7. Yeah? So this is now all the things summarized of a PT2 element. Finally, let's let's compare different different PT2 elements that we see how those phases and so on do change. Show you at the computer again. So the first thing we want to look at what is happening if the damping factor is a below one. Well, it looks like this. Yeah? Look at that. Yeah? Should not be a big surprise, right? So there is this is 0 0.1, this is 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and here you see the resonance frequency is dropping. It's getting lower. Yeah? And also the resonance overshoot is getting lower. And here, this is exactly what we also have seen first, yeah? that this is getting less steeper and steeper. So the transition is simply getting gentle. Yeah? And now let's add also something, some dampings. Well, let's start with 0 0.2, then yet let's use 0 0.5 and and 0 0.7 and 1 of course for reference and then use a higher number like 3. Uh, 
how does this look? Aha, here we say, here we see, this is 0.2, yeah? looking as 0 0.2 as before, yeah? 0 0.5, 0 0.7, no resonance anymore, yeah? 1, and here with higher dampings, we see already this transition into two PT ones. Okay. So this is PT2 element, okay. final element which we are talking about. Now we know quite a lot of standard elements. Okay. We are ready to use these standard elements in with a model of our control loop. How we build this model of our control loop will then be next video. Yeah? So next video we're discussing how we can use our transfer function, our transfers, uh, transfer for uh, the control loop simply. Yeah. yeah. This will then be next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.